You're going to have your deeds on the day of judgment. The day you want to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will have all your deeds with you, right? You worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes. And on top of that, what did you do? Did you protect those deeds? So when, you, when the box is finally opened and the angels are taking account of what has happened and Allah in His own way is taking account of what has happened, you don't want to end up having to put your head down in shame to say, you know what, those are my deeds. How will that good come with me on the day of judgment? You take a look at the verse. Listen to this verse. Man jaa those who come with a good deed on that day will have in return something better than the deed they did and they will be protected from the tremor or the shaking or the fear of that particular day and in another place allah says Man Whoever comes on that day with a good deed shall have it multiplied tenfold. And that's the minimum. You will have your good deed multiplied tenfold. Now I ask you a question. Those of you who speak the Arabic language, when you want someone to do a good deed, what do you say? You say if'al or you say i'mal. But you don't say iti bihi. You say do it, act, you know, act upon it, do it, but you don't say come with it. In this verse, Allah didn't say whoever does a good deed will have it multiplied by 10. Whoever acted upon a good deed will have it multiplied by 10. He uses a special verb and that is to come with. Ja'a bi shay to come with something. Man ja'a bi al hasana. Whoever comes with the good deed. That means I need to do the good deed and then pack it and keep it and hold it in such a way that one day I can come with it, right? That's what it means. And from this, some of the Mufassireen have actually said to do the deed is simple, but to come with it on the day of judgment is much more difficult. You might be slightly confused. Let me explain. Subhanallah. It goes back to a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi reported in Sahih Muslim, narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu an. He says, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked us, do you know the bankrupt person? So they said, yeah, the one who doesn't have dirham and mata, the one who doesn't have wealth, money, provision and assets. No assets, bankrupt. He says, wait, a truly bankrupt person is he who comes on the day of judgment and they have lots of prayer and lots of fasting and lots of good deeds and lots of charity, lots of it. How can a bankrupt person be one who has lots of charity, lots of prayer, lots of good deeds, lots of fasting, you know, voluntary deeds, we call them nafila. But hang on, listen to the rest of the statement. He says, he comes on the day of judgment with his deeds. Before he can actually take those deeds forth, he has wronged this one, sworn that one, backbitten about that one, eaten the wealth of that one, harmed that one, perhaps murdered that one, etc. So what happens? There is justice on that day, subhanallah, justice. You had a lot of money, you had a lot of wealth, but you owed people. So you had to start giving them bit by bit. And you started giving those whom you owed and you had nothing left. And there were still so many people you owed. So if you look at it in deed currency, and that's the currency on that particular day. Those who come forth and they have not wronged others. Those who come forth and their deeds are protected. Their deeds are looked after. Those are the ones who will have success on that particular day. So if I've come with lots of good deeds, but I wrong that one, they're going to take some of my deeds and give them to that person. More of my deeds and give them to the other one. More of the deeds and give them to a third one. Until all my deeds are depleted and there are still so many people whom I have wronged while I was living. When the person's deeds are depleted, do you know what happens? There are still so many whom he owes because he has wronged them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs that the bad deeds of those people who were wronged be taken and thrown onto the scale of this person who came initially with so many good deeds. Look at that. Now what happens? He starts getting bad deeds. So the sins committed by someone else were given to me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. That is the bankrupt person. Suddenly they're thrown into hellfire by the most merciful. Because if you commit a sin between you and Allah, you have four conditions. What are they? Admit your sin, regret it, seek forgiveness of Allah and promise not to do it again. And if that happens, it's wiped out. 
complete wipeout. Don't doubt it. But the problem is, if your sin is connected to another human being, some of these pointers that I've been saying, you know, slander, backbiting, deceiving, abusing, etc., etc., then there is a fifth condition above those four, and that is that person needs to forgive you. Who knows when you arrive on the day of judgment what the reality was? What if it turned out that you were wrong? And what if it turned out that neither of you were wrong? What if? Just what if some of the detail happened to be against you? So therefore try and sort out your matters here. Subhanallah. Such that when we get in the day of judgment, when we get in front of Allah on that day, we have these deeds, we bring them forth. They came with us. We have not slandered anyone because we didn't lose our deeds, subhanallah, having wronged someone and we brought them forth. Our bucket was not leaking. We had deeds, we filled them into the bucket. And you know what we did? We ensured that there was no leak at the bottom. In the same way that when you do a bad deed, you seek forgiveness. When you do a good deed, seek to protect that deed. You follow what I'm saying? When you do a bad deed, you seek forgiveness, it's wiped out. When you do a good deed, seek protection so it's consolidated. You need to remember this. Going back to the day of judgment, my brothers and sisters, to do your deed is one thing, but to come with that deed is perhaps 10 times more difficult. Therefore, Allah says, whoever comes with the deed, I will multiply it by 10 for them. Now, do you understand why the multiplication? Now, do you understand why you deserve that that deed be multiplied for you? I came on the day of judgment. I still have my deeds. That means I didn't wrong someone. I didn't deceive someone. I didn't eat the wealth of someone. I didn't backbite about someone. And subhanallah, here are my deeds. My brothers and sisters from today, be upon your best behavior because you don't want to lose the good deeds that you've been doing.